The Song of Hiawatha, 15, Hiawatha's Lamentation, by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, read by Frank Blissett. In those days the evil spirits, all the manitos of mischief, fearing Hiawatha's wisdom and his love for Chibiabos, jealous of their faithful friendship and their noble words and actions, made at length a league against them to molest them and destroy them. Hiawatha, wise and wary, often said to Chibiobos, O oh, my brother, do not leave me, lest the evil spirits harm you. Chibiobos, young and heedless, laughing shook his coal-black tresses, answered ever sweet and childlike, Do not fear for me, O oh brother, harm and evil come not near me. Once when Peboan, the winter, roofed with ice the big sea water, when the snowflakes, whirling downward, hissed among the withered oak leaves, changed the pine trees into wigwams, covered all the earth with silence, armed with arrows, shod with snowshoes, heeding not his brother's warning, fearing not the evil spirits, forth to hunt the deer with antlers, all alone went Chibiobos. Right across the big sea water sprang with speed the deer before him, with the wind and snow he followed, o'er the treacherous ice he followed, wild with all the fierce commotion and the rapture of the hunting. But beneath the evil spirits lay in ambush, waiting for him, broke the treacherous ice beneath him, dragged him downward to the bottom, buried in the sand his body. Unkta he, the god of water, he the god of the Dakotas, drowned him in the deep abysses of the lake of Gichigumi. From the headlands Hiawatha sent forth such a wail of anguish, such a fearful lamentation, that the bison paused to listen, and the wolves howled from the prairies, and the thunder in the distance starting answered, Bim wa wa. Then his face with black he painted, with his robe his head he covered. In his wigwam sat lamenting, seven long weeks he sat lamenting, uttering still this moan of sorrow. He is dead, the sweet musician, he the sweetest of all singers, he has gone from us forever. He has moved a little nearer to the master of all music, to the master of all singing. Oh, my brother, Chibiobos! And the melancholy fir trees waved their dark green fans above him, waved their purple cones above him, sighing with him to console him, mingling with his lamentation, their complaining, their lamenting. Came the spring, and all the forest looked in vain for Chibiobos, Sighed the rivulet, Seboisha, sighed the rushes in the meadow. From the treetops sang the bluebird, sang the bluebird, the oasa, Chibiobos, Chibiobos, he is dead, the sweet musician. From the wigwam sang the robin, sang the robin, the opichi. Chibiobos, Chibiobos, he is dead, the sweetest singer. 
And at night through all the forest went the whippoorwill complaining, wailing went the Wawanesa. Chebeabos, Chebeabos, he is dead, the sweet musician, he the sweetest of all singers. Then the medicine men, the medas, the magicians, the wabanos, and the Jossakids, the prophets, came to visit Hiawatha, built a sacred lodge beside him, to appease him, to console him, walked in silent grave procession, bearing each a pouch of healing, skin of beaver, lynx, or otter, filled with magic roots and simples, filled with very potent medicines. When he heard their steps approaching, Hiawatha ceased lamenting, called no more on Chibiobos. Not he questioned, not he answered, but his mournful head uncovered. From his face the morning colors washed he slowly and in silence. Slowly and in silence followed onward to the sacred wigwam. There a magic drink they gave him, made of Nama Wusk, the spearmint, and Wabano Wusk, the yarrow, roots of power and herbs of healing, beat their drums and shook their rattles, chanted singly and in chorus mystic songs like these they chanted. I myself, myself, behold me, tis the great gray eagle talking. Come, ye white crows, come and hear him, the loud-speaking thunder helps me, all of the unseen spirits help me. I can hear their voices calling, all around the sky I hear them. I can blow you strong, my brother, I can heal you, Hiawatha. Hiawatha, replied the chorus, way ha way, the mystic chorus. Friends of mine are all the serpents. Hear me shake my skin of henhawk. Mong, the white loon, I can kill him. I can shoot your heart and kill it. I can blow you strong, my brother. I can heal you, Hiawatha. Hiawatha, replied the chorus. Way ha way, the mystic chorus. I myself, myself, the prophet, when I speak the wigwam trembles, shakes the sacred lodge with terror, hands unseen begin to shake it. When I walk the sky I tread on bends and makes a noise beneath me. I can blow you strong, my brother. Rise and speak, O Hiawatha. Hiawatha replied the chorus, way ha way, the mystic chorus. Then they shook their medicine pouches o'er the head of Hiawatha, danced their medicine dance around him, and upstarting wild and haggard, like a man from dreams awakened, he was healed of all his madness. As the clouds are swept from heaven, straightway from his brain departed all his moody melancholy. As the ice is swept from rivers, straightway from his heart departed all his sorrow and affliction. Then they summoned Chibeobos from his grave beneath the waters, from the sands of Gichigumi summoned Hiawatha's brother. And so mighty was the magic of that cry and invocation that he heard it as he lay there underneath the big sea water. From the sand he rose and listened, heard the music and the singing, 
came obedient to the summons to the doorway of the wigwam, but to enter they forbade him. Through a chink a coal they gave him, through the door a burning firebrand, ruler in the land of spirits, ruler o'er the dead they made him, telling him a fire to kindle for all those that died thereafter, camp fires for their night encampments on their solitary journey to the kingdom of Ponima, to the land of the hereafter. From the village of his childhood, from the homes of those who knew him, passing silent through the forest, like a smoke wreath wafted sideways, slowly vanished Chibeobos. Where he passed the branches moved not, where he trod the grasses bent not, and the fallen leaves of last year made no sound beneath his footstep. Four whole days he journeyed onward, down the pathway of the dead men, on the dead man's strawberry feasted, crossed the melancholy river. On the swinging log he crossed it, came unto the lake of silver, in the stone canoe was carried to the islands of the blessed, to the land of ghosts and shadows. On that journey, moving slowly, many weary spirits saw he, panting under heavy burdens, laden with war-clubs, bows and arrows, robes of fur and pots and kettles, and with food that friends had given for that solitary journey. Eh, why do the living, said they, lay such heavy burdens on us? Better were it to go naked, better were it to go fasting, than to bear such heavy burdens on our long and weary journey. Forth then issued Hiawatha, wandered eastward, wandered westward, teaching men the use of simples, and the antidotes for poisons, and the cure of all diseases. Thus was first made known to mortals all the mystery of metamin, all of the sacred art of healing. That was the Song of Hiawatha, 15, Hiawatha's Lamentation by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, read by Frank Blissett.